In the last video, we wrote a few lines of JavaScript code. So we had some cloud functions. And basically what this did is every time a new user was created, we added a new user document into Firestore. So now we're done writing all the JavaScript that we're going to need for this app. I'm going to exit that. And let's come back to our application. And the idea for this video is we want to render a recycler view, which shows the list of all the users in the app along with their status. And this is simply going to be querying that user's collection that we just created. And one thing before we actually start coding is I want to show you what I did here is I created some fake users. So basically, here's the here's my actual user with the default emojis. But I also went ahead and just added a few other documents to make the app more interesting while we don't really have other users. So let me show you what I did. I can just say auto ID um, the field. The first field is going to be display name. It's going to be of type string. And how will we make Elon Musk a user for our app. And the second field will be emojis. And Elon Musk is probably thinking a lot about cars and rocket ships, right? So I'm going to paste in those two emojis and then tap on save. Cool. So that added one more user document to the collection with the fields that we just declared. So let's go back now to Android Studio. And inside of main activity, we want to basically have a recycler view here, which fetches that data and displays it. So the first thing I want to do is go into the corresponding layout file for main activity. We don't need the hello world. And instead, I'm going to drag out a recycler view. So we're going to have to add a dependency for that. So tap on OK. That'll take a second or two to finish. Okay, and then I'm going to make the width and height be match parent. Basically, I want this recycler view to take up the whole screen height. I'm going to give this an ID of RV users. Go back to main activity. And the idea here is we now want to set up the recycler view properly with an adapter and layout manager. So when your data is coming from Firestore, as it is in our app, then Firebase actually has a really nice library, which makes it a little bit simpler to set up your recycler view. And this is the page I have open here. So if you, if you Google for Firebase UI for Android, you should be able to find this page. And this is what we're going to use to power our recycler view. If you want a refresher on recycler view and how it works, which will be helpful to understand what we're doing here, I'll leave a pointer for a video I created about that topic in the description. So using this uh, library, all we need to do is we're going to add a dependency here for using Firebase UI with Cloud Firestore. So copy that. Let's go into Android Studio and open up the build.gradle file, which is in the app module. Paste that, tap on sync now. And now what you should do is hit the link for Firebase UI for Cloud Firestore. And the first thing we need, like most other recycler apps need, is a model. What is the data we're trying to render in each row or each element of the recycler view? And the data we're trying to render is one user. So we're going to have a data class in Kotlin, which represents a user object. So ideally, this really should be its own class. But just for the sake of expediency and kind of to make it all fit together nicely, I'm going to define it right here inside of main activity. So I'm going to define a data class here called user. And there are going to be two attributes on this user. The first is going to be a, um, a string, which is for the display name. And one of the things that's important to note about these data classes is that if you're trying to map them with a Firestore data object, you need to have a default value for each element of the data class. So I'm going to set this equal to empty string. And then the other attribute is called emojis. Is also a string and also has a default value of empty string. And then these names should match up exactly with whatever you called it inside of the document over here. So make sure that that's consistent so that that mapping can happen automatically for you. All right, so now we have the model defined. Now we want to actually make a query. And the way the query is going to work is we're going to have to get an instance of Firestore in our application and then query on the user's collection. And then if you want to order by something like by first name, for example, or limit it somehow, you can do that here. So the first thing we need to do is add the dependency for Firestore on Android. So I'm going to use the docs. And let's um, make sure you're on the Kotlin tab. And we're going to copy this. Go into, again, the app level build.gradle. Tap on sync now. 
And so the way you reference Firestore is really simple, actually. You just copy this, and then you put that at the top of your class where you want to reference um, Firestore. Like that. And you have to import this. Great. So now we have access to Firestore with DB. So if you go back to the guide about Firebase UI, here's what the query might look like. This is in Java code, so we have to do a little bit of translation. So in our case, it's going to be val query is equal to db dot collection, and then our collection is called users, and that's actually all I want. You can kind of customize this if you want, but for now, I just want to get all the users in that collection. So the next thing is we now need to set some Firestore Recycler options parameterized by the data, and this will take in the query, and then we're going to call the build method. This is a builder class, and we call dot build to actually get an instance of this. So I'll call val mm, options is equal to fire store recycler options. Import that builder, and this is again parameterized by the data class. So I'll say user, and then we have to set the query. So in set query, it takes in two parameters, one which is actual query, and second is the data that you expect to get from that query. And in our case, we expect to get a list of users. So we're going to specify here user class.java. And one really important point here is that you need to specify a life cycle owner. Basically, you need to tell Firestore when should this query be active and when should it stop. Um, and the way where you do that is by setting a life cycle owner is going to be the activity like the, the parent class. And so to reference that, we'll just say this. And then we call build. So the next thing we need is an adapter for the recycler view. And the adapter is responsible for telling us how can we take the data that we have and bind it to a view which is going to be shown in the UI. So if you scroll down here, you can kind of take a look at what an adapter might look like. So going back to the code, what I'm going to write here is say val adapter is equal to, and we're going to create a subclass of the parent class, um, Firestore Recycler Adapter, and just implement the methods in line. Again, if, if, if we were kind of doing this in a more proper way, I would actually recommend exporting this into a separate class. But just for the sake of kind of keeping things simple, I'm defining both the data class and the recycler view adapter right here in line. So I'll just say, object, which means I'm going to create an instance of this class. So let's say Firestore Recycler Adapter. Import that. And then this is parameterized by, by two things. One, which is a type, and that's going to be user. And then second, we need a view holder. Um, and this view holder is an object which holds on to each view of the recycler view. So one row of the recycler view, essentially. And we're going to define that. We're going to call it user view holder. And then this is going to take in options. And then we actually have to implement methods here. So first, let's define user view holder. And user view holder is simply going to just be a subclass of the recycler view view holder. So I'm going to define that up here. Class user view holder is a subclass of recycler view dot view holder. View holder. And then we need to add the constructor parameter, which Android Studio will do for us. OK, cool. So now we've defined that. Um, so now the subclass of Firestore Recycler Adapter has to implement certain methods. And that's what this is complaining about. So I'll just tap this on implement methods, implement methods helper. And there are two methods we need to override. So select both of them. And the job here is in on create view holder, we need to use a layout inflator to create a new view. And on bind view holder, we need to take the data at this position and bind it into this view holder. Again, to really make this expedient and quick, I'm going to use a built-in Android layout for the on create view holder. And if you wanted to customize the layout at all, then you should create your own layout. But just to keep things simple, there's an inbuilt one that will fit, fit our needs. So I'm going to say layout inflator dot from, and we need to pass in a context here. So I'm going to pass in this at main activity, which is referencing the activity. And then inflate. And here's the um, inbuilt layout that we're going to use. It's going to be a, a two text view 
um, layout, android.r.layout.simplelistItem2. Then the next parameter is the parent, which is the parameter that was passed in. And finally, attach to root, we're going to pass in false here because the recycler view will take care of attaching it or detaching it. So capture that into a return value called view, and then we're going to return a new view holder, and the view holder takes in as a parameter, if you remember from up here, the view, view holder takes in as a parameter a view. And so we're going to return here a new view holder, so a new user view holder with that view. And then finally, we need to now bind the data. So there are two text views as part of this inbuilt layout. Let me show you. If I go to the definition here, let me only look at the code tab. So this is a two line list item. And there's basically a text view here, which is a little bit larger. And then there's another one which has an ID of text two, which is a little bit smaller. So going back into main activity, we're going to grab references to, the, to these two text views. So val TV name is going to be the top one. And this is going to be a text view. It's going to be um, inside of the view from the view holder. We're going to find a view by the ID, which is the one that we just looked at, android.r.id.text1. And then there's one more, which is text2. And this is going to be the text view where we're going to place all the emojis. So now, in terms of binding the data properly, all we need to do is in the text view for the name, we need to set the text attribute to be the name of the user. So we actually have that passed in as a parameter here uh, called model. So I'll say model dot display name. And then for the text view for the emojis, we again are going to call the other attribute on the user model, the model dot emojis. This should be tv emojis dot text. All right, that's pretty much it. So now all we have to do is just, let's use the adapter at, in reference to the recycler view. So we called the recycler view. We had we gave an ID of RV users. So I'm going to say RV users .adapter is equal to adapter. And the very last step is we need to set a layout manager on the recycler view. So I'll say linear layout manager. We import that, and then linear layout manager takes in one parameter at least the version that we're using, which is a context. So I'll pass in this. OK, moment of truth. Let's see if this works. We just wrote a lot of code to open up the emulator. And hopefully now, because we um, are passing this query into the adapter, it should automatically fetch the data and show it. All right, so that didn't work. And it turns out that the reason was actually because I wasn't properly adding in the internet permission. So what we can do is go into the manifest file, and start typing users permission. And the very first recommendation here is you need internet permission. So now that we've done that, let's go back and run the app one more time. OK, and now you can see that we do get this data back. Um, so all of the information from Cloud Firestore is here. And then one thing we can try, which is super cool, is if we go over here. Um, and we had Elon Musk thinking about the car and the rocket ship, which you can see over here. Let's edit this. And maybe Elon Musk is not thinking about that right now. He's thinking about pretzels and being happy. So do that and update. And immediately you can see how in our app, Elon Musk, his status got updated. And that's the power of Firestore and kind of the way we have this set up is that every time there's a change, we're automatically instructing the adapter how to query for the data we get that and then we bind the data properly. So that's one of the things we get for free out of the box with this integration. And the same thing works actually if a new user is created. So if a new user signs into our app, then we would get a new document in the user's collection and we would automatically get that data sent down to all the clients who are using this recycler view. So now we have a way to see all the users and their status, which is super cool. The next step is we want to be able to allow users to update their status, right? So in the next video, we're going to add one more menu item, which allows the user to write a new emoji status and then send it to Firestore. If you're still following along, hit the like button to let me know that you're still with me. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.